Hey guys, Falcon197 here, and welcome to my FOB security tutorial for Metal Gear Solid 5. This video will serve as the follow-up to my Infiltration 101 guide, which covered the fundamentals for how to assess and attack enemy bases in FOB mode, and did in-depth analysis over tactics, styles, and pro tips for how to be successful at base infiltration. As I said near the beginning of that guide, the subject of base security is something that deserves its own video, since quite a lot goes into establishing and maintaining an effective base defense. In MGS5, FOB security is every bit as complex as the art of infiltration, and there's plenty of room for debate over whether it's more important to be effective at attack or defense. I'm of the opinion that both are of equal importance, because my goal is to arm people with knowledge so they can become more effective overall. So as we start into this, be forewarned that base security is a subject with many facets. There are lots of moving parts, and mastering everything you need in order to be successful will take time. Basically, this video is attempting to explain how a watch works, but do your best to identify your own knowledge gaps and level up your strategies accordingly. If you put in the time, you will see improvement. Also, before going farther, I want to give a quick shout out to the man known as Stick or Stike, who authored the last major FOB defense guide on Steam's MGS5 community hub. I've drawn some of my info from his guide since, well, it's really good information to have and goes into great detail on a number of the technical aspects related to base security. I learned a lot from reading his guide, so it's only fair I assign credit and thank him for his awesome work. Check out the description for a link to his guide, but be advised that some of the information there has been out of date since 2016. Now then, with the stage set, let's start by unpacking the basics of FOB security, beginning with the fundamentals of how to get started in FOB mode. FOB mode isn't something players new to MGS5 can just launch into. The game forces you to gain experience with the mechanics of base building and staff management long before thrusting you into the open world of FOBs. It all starts with completing Mission 22 of the single player campaign, so if you're not far along in the story, you'll want to finish that mission before starting on FOBs. But even if you haven't made it past Mission 22, this video is still relevant because I'm starting from the ground up, so the info I'm about to cover can help you newer guys prepare and gain an early advantage. The first step to building an FOB is to select its location by purchasing waters in which to construct the base. Initially, the game lets you pick waters for your first FOB for free, and requires in-game currency to add additional waters for more bases. Yes, I know, no one likes microtransactions, but before you reach for your pitchforks and torches to march against Konami, you should know that the daily reward system in MGS5 provides you with a steady stream of MB coins, just for logging in week to week. So as long as you play consistently, you should have no trouble raking together enough currency to get new waters by the time you finish maxing out platforms for the FOB you're currently working on. As for which waters to select for starting out, I leave that up to your judgment, but there are two factors you need to consider. First, take note of the varying grades at which different resources can be produced at each location. It should quickly become clear that some regions offer unique advantages by offering more of a certain resource type. Depending on where you are with your research progression, you should be able to work out what resource or resources you're expending the most of in order to advance your tech tree, so let that be the primary influencer on what waters to use. Second to this, there's the subject of base layout. For purposes of maintaining an effective defense, the configuration of platforms matters because their orientation and the placement of the core affect how much difficulty an attacker encounters along their infiltration route. Other YouTubers who are really into maxing out their base defense have made videos on which waters work best for certain defensive strategies. For myself, i found that it doesn't really matter unless you're trying to build nukes, because orienting your command platforms a certain way provides more options for placing custom defenses in order to protect the bridges between the plats. If you'd like to learn more on that subject, I recommend referring to other guides. Feel free to give the linked video in the description to look for more information. As for me, I'll encourage you guys to stick with your best instinct and focus more on the resource balancing aspects so that you can keep your supply coffers full and continue teching up and building your base more efficiently. Speaking of base building, this brings me to arguably the most important point for ensuring an effective base defense. After you've selected waters and begun the process of constructing your first FOB, there are some critical things to keep in mind while expanding your platforms. The reason why I consider this the most important step to base defense is because so many people get it wrong, and the result leaves their bases exposed to attackers, so pay close attention and try to avoid some of these common mistakes. First, the command platform is the main hub of your operations, and it should be the platform you upgrade in the beginning, since it's the first platform you're given when you construct a new FOB. 
Unfortunately, they tend to have longer build times than other platforms, but the results are worthwhile as you're given a higher staff cap for all of your teams, for every platform that you construct. It's also the hardest platform to infiltrate because it funnels attackers along a narrow and maze-like route. Once your first command platform is deployed to start a new FOB, you should immediately focus on leveling it up to four platforms before adding any new unit-specific plats. Basically, there's a golden rule to how you should build up your base, and it's this. Do not start additional platforms or additional FOBs until you have built all platforms up for each set. Let me say that again. If you simultaneously queue up multiple platform sets on your base, you do so at your own peril. Because in FOB mode, there is no bigger strategic weakness to your base defense than having incomplete platforms. Why is that? Stop and think. As an infiltrator, your goal is to reach the core, and having fewer platforms to traverse only makes that goal easier, especially if you're trying to rescue captured staff, since the game doesn't care which platform you infiltrate as long as you reach the core. In other words, imagine someone captures a bunch of your staff and you want to get them back. You go to counter his base via a revenge wormhole, and you find he has an FOB with a single exposed platform. Guess what? You can deploy in, shoot the handful of guards defending that platform, and dive into his core in less than two minutes. Mission accomplished. You've got all your staff back, and you didn't have to contend with any of your opponent's fully developed platforms. That same scenario can and will happen to you if you allow it, and that's why I'm giving a fair warning that you need to avoid exposing yourself as much as possible. A 1 out of 4 platform base is just asking to be raided without retaliation, whereas a 4 platform setup raises the cost and difficulty of attacking exponentially. But Falcon, I really just want to get my FOB up as quick as possible, and I don't plan on raiding people for staff or making enemies. Why can't I multitask my building? Here's something else to consider. Beyond the prospect of incomplete platforms being a neon sign for attackers, building plats requires a lot of resources. As you progress with your FOB construction, the cost and build time of new platforms steadily goes up. In a short time, you can burn a lot of materials in GMP, so even if you've been grinding and stockpiling beforehand, if you queue multiple platform sets, there will be a point where you find you've got a lot of incomplete platforms just sitting there exposed, as you're busy collecting resources to complete them. But Falcon, since platforms in the process of being built don't count towards an FOB's defense, isn't being exposed to attackers ultimately unavoidable? Why not just queue up as many sets as possible and get it over with faster? Nice in theory, but let's consider the time aspect. If you build up your platforms one at a time, the amount of resources needed to add the next platform drops by a factor if you avoid multitasking. There's a world of difference between building up one set of base platforms and building up several. I'm speaking on this from my own experience, because I hit a major wall in the course of building my four FOBs. By the time I unlocked the four set of waters, the cost for each platform was so high that running multiple build projects was impossible, and I made the mistake of starting several platforms up simultaneously. I didn't realize how exposed I was until I found myself grinding my ass off for resources while my base sat wide open to attackers with just one or two plats in some cases. And big surprise, most of the people attacking me used them to score easier wins. I realized my error too late to reverse course, so in the end, it all boils down to the window of time you'll leave yourself exposed to during construction. The less that window stays open, the better. And going one set of platforms at a time is the safest play. Here's a quick and dirty list on what order you can construct your platforms in order to ensure your PvP critical stats are maximized early on. I've provided a link in the description to this image so you can refer back to it as you build up your FOBs. There's also a comprehensive breakdown on the FOB stats furnished by each of your units and how they play into your defense's overall effectiveness. As a final note, be forewarned that while building up all four FOBs offers a huge advantage, it can take months to accomplish. So only take this road if you're prepared to go all the way and embrace the resource grind. You might also need some extra MB coins to seal the deal. Yes, yes, tis true, but it's not the worst thing in the world since if you're diligent about signing in often, you can rake in roughly 80 to 100 MB coins a week. By the time you max out the platforms on one FOB, you should have enough coin for more waters. One last thing, never mm. ever buy multiple waters and try constructing more than one FOB at once. You will regret your life choices, and guys like me will chuckle as we come stomping into your base to farm your resources and staff. And on that, let's move on to the subject of how to upgrade your security. As you're building up your FOBs and expanding your staff, you'll want to pay frequent visits to the security menu and learn what's what. The first thing you'll find is the option to go with basic or advanced security options. 
in the beginning, as you're starting out with constructing your first FOB, using the basic view is fine because it lets you designate a preset level of security, based on GMP cost and nothing else. Higher is better, obviously, since it employs more of your tech and staff to protect your platforms. Basic mode can also be useful for training purposes, if, for example, you want to practice PvPing friends or open up your base for some reason. The easiest way to strip down your defenses is to go into basic and select the zero GMP option to completely remove all security from a platform. But aside from that, the basic mode offers a very simplistic approach to security and will only get you so far. Advanced mode is where the fun happens. Unlike basic, you're free to configure and fine tune virtually every aspect of security by platform set, down to microing which sectors your guards patrol and where custom security assets are deployed. Everything combines to create a security level, which rates how strong your base is against attackers and provides a kind of deterrent for anyone making a first pass to recon your base via the attack screen. A few things to note here. First, make sure that you keep tabs on things related directly to your security forces, like the skill level of your guards and the grade of their equipment. Also pay mind to the amount of equipment deployed per platform, because sometimes the game likes to deprive you of things you should otherwise be using, if you aren't careful with what options you tweak. I recommend configuring defenses for each platform individually to ensure nothing goes amiss. You are also able to modify more granular settings like zones of patrol for each platform. The rule here is that the guards will face whatever zones you specify, which means that higher priority zones will have more guards facing or patrolling them. If you don't assign any zones, the game will deploy guards randomly to cover the platform. Being smart with your zone configurations can stop intruders from rolling all the way to your core unopposed and can enable guards to cover each other or be more likely to notice if one of their numbers goes down. Putting zones adjacent to one another can limit how much guards turn or move, so it's best to place them across from one another and prioritize points an intruder must cross in order to traverse the platform. When it comes to base security, the single most important facet is the skill level of your soldiers. Why? Because each staff member's skill affects the level of your teams, which in turn affects your research capabilities and other key security factors, such as blockade times and the frequency of intrusion scans. The equipment you arm your guards with also matters significantly, since you want to research armor, equipment, and then weapons as much as possible to unlock higher tier items. These affect how much punishment your guards can take and dish out, and the stats gained from each research item are also influenced by the skill level of the guards using them. For example, S-ranked guards with sniper rifles are able to acquire targets faster and deal more damage via headshots than any of the lower ranks. Keep this in mind as your goal should be to rank all your people up to S as fast as possible, and from there, try to push them to the top skill levels to reach maximum benefits. We'll go into this more later, but let's get back to the tech tree for a moment. You should decide early on which tech you want to get and make a plan based on that. For starters, designate your FOB security forces as lethal or non-lethal, and define which class of weaponry you want them to use. Here's some analysis. Lethal guards tend to be more tanky because they wear battle dress and their tactics focus on killing intruders as opposed to pacifying and extracting them. However, they are vulnerable to tactical plays like sleeping gas. Non-lethal guards, on the other hand, wear gas masks, but the only way they can defeat an attacker is to knock him out and then fault in him, which becomes impossible if the attacker sits on top of a materials container and just snipes everyone. Pretty much the only things working in favor of non-lethal from what I have seen is the loss of ESP an attacker will incur if they're knocked out, as well as the time they'll lose from waking up, not to mention being deprived of the use of their 24 sleep grenades which they may bring to knock out lethal guards. But again, if they sit on a container and snipe, they're effectively invincible, and if they bring a sniper with a drum mag, they can corkscrew their way to victory. On the subject of weapons, each class has its own set of advantages. CQB equipped guards will use riot shields to absorb incoming fire, and their shotgun blasts will knock intruders down at close range. They tend to rush in packs, and they'll get in intruders' faces to engage them, which can be good or bad depending on your platform layout. Guards with medium ranged weapons will rush attackers in groups while using lock on missile launchers and LMGs with bottomless clip mode to target them from afar. Guards with snipers will nail intruders at long range and stand the best chance of quickly eliminating players with headshots, although they don't rush as effectively and tend to camp more. As you focus on building up your FOBs and leveling security, make every effort to rank up your staff and your teams as quickly as possible and keep a steady stream of resources flowing. One of the best ways to do this is by grinding the FOB event, which offers an unlimited source of bonus materials and reward points you can use to unlock new staff for each team. Another way to increase your resource and staff inflow is to invade enemy FOBs, but until you're able to attack higher tier bases, this may not be the best strategy for getting staff, and it can leave you open to retaliation if you're detected. FOBs loaded with resources, on the other hand, are always free game, 
and it's not uncommon to find lower ranked or inactive players with tons of materials and limited security. Back on the area of technology, you should prioritize development of security devices, particularly the placeable cameras and mines. These can supplement your static defenses and plug tactical gaps or weak points in your security, but they have high research costs and require your teams to be high level. If possible, get them and use them, but have a strategy for placing them too. There are plenty of other YouTubers that have devised layouts for how to place mines and cameras to block bridges or create obstacles for intruders. I recommend doing the research yourself, however, because I won't be covering where to put stuff in this video, since I believe there's a limit to the information you should arm people with. Some defenses you can place on your FOB need to be captured in the field, on either single player missions or from other FOBs. This includes stuff like mortars, HMG turrets, and AA batteries, all of which can be placed on your platforms via the security options menu for your guards to use as part of the base defense. Of course, infiltrators can use them too, and steal or destroy them, so consider them expendable assets and stockpile as many as possible in order to ensure that you have replacements ready to go. As a goal, you should aim for having all S or S plus security staff, in addition to getting your non-security personnel ranked up to advance your tech tree. The advantages of having high ranked staff are numerous, but I don't recommend adding too many max ranked or S plus plus staff to your security forces, because they're hard to replace if an intruder captures them. And there's a point at which you run the risk of making yourself a target for farming by players who want to max their own personnel. Guilty as charged. While the subject of how to level staff really deserves its own video, I'll at least try to run through some of the basics here. The main idea is that staff leveling is a process of gradual gains over time. Progress won't come immediately, and success here requires persistence and lots of patience. You need to constantly process incoming staff and ensure you're only taking on new personnel that can offer you something. Early on, you should focus on only recruiting people above a certain rank, like D or C, and dismiss anyone you get who's under that rank. Over time, once you have only people above D or C ranks, you can raise the minimum cutoff to B or A and repeat the same cycling process while only taking on new staff above the threshold. By the time you finish rotating everyone, you should have your staff at S or above and shift your efforts to filtering out any troublemakers or personnel that don't provide perks useful to your overall stats. Staff management is one of the most prolonged and involved tasks in MGS5, and you should be prepared to micromanage it if you intend to max out your FOB security. So, what's the point of upgrading FOB security anyway? First and foremost is the higher cost of entry. Even though there's no such thing as an invincible FOB, you can ensure only top level players will attack you successfully. You can also gain personal benefits from the tech upgrades you research, since most of the equipment you develop isn't just for guards. You can make use of it as well and improve your performance on FOB mode in general as you infiltrate rival bases and work your way up the leaderboards, both in ESP and the PF meta. Strong security also provides greater peace of mind, since noobs won't be able to just waltz into your core whenever they want. Know your fucking place, trash! For managing your security in the long term, it's important to note that there are no set requirements for how many FOBs you should get. How high up the tech and expansion chain you want to aim depends on your goal and how much time you want to commit. You will always get back the effort you put in, and that's one of the truly best aspects of MGS5, is that the grind doesn't go unrewarded. Here's a fair warning though, echoing what I said earlier about the time it'll take if you do choose to shoot for 4 FOBs with max security. Expect a high cost of resources, including GMP, MB coins, and time. Time that will be spent grinding the FOB events for resources, and micromanaging everything from staff to tech to your security setup, and at the same time dealing with rivals you're sure to encounter along the way. Applying caution is recommended, especially if you're playing aggressively for ESP, because enemy players will exploit bases under construction whenever they can, so I advise choosing carefully what times you go on the attack. Lastly, embrace the grind, because it will challenge you. Getting all four FOBs up took me a period of a few months, and that was with roughly half my overall game time spent running the FOB event and hitting other bases for several hours every day. I had lots of stuff leveling at once, and if I could do it over again, I would have taken the time to plan things out rather than just diving in. So don't be afraid to manage your time if you want to take this seriously. Another fair warning. Aside from time, you will burn tons and tons of raw materials constructing your platforms and researching items, so here are some tips on how to get extra stuff when you need it. Use online combat deployments as much as possible. 
You should work to level your combat team as quickly as you can so you can maximize the number of teams you can deploy and ensure maximum payout from each operation. Don't be afraid of losing personnel because once you get your grind on, you should be able to replace the people you lose quickly, and this is a journey that requires sacrifice. For GMP, sell some plants or precious mineral resources if necessary, but only if necessary. The best strat here is to ensure you aren't forced to exchange your more re valuable resources is to grind the FOB event or attack people and don't get caught. As a brief but related sidetrack from the subject of security, the PF meta contains some of the most complex aspects of MGS5. By competing as a PF or private force, you take part in a metagame that simulates battle between you and other players' armies. Clouds, you have function. weekly leagues that pit you against other people of similar ranking. Each matchup consists of two rounds, attack and defense. Your stats for each depend on how strong your forces are, and a huge number of factors go into this. Everything from your security level, to your resources, GMP, technology, and staff rank distribution play a role in determining your stats. Unfortunately, covering everything here in depth would take far too long and goes beyond the scope of this vid. So the best advice I can offer is to focus on ranking up staff, leveling your base, and keeping your resources and GMP as high as possible if you want to gain any leverage in the leagues. Also make sure to deploy your combat teams to research the power-ups for attack and defense so you have a trump card to use if you're up against tougher opponents. And watch out for hackers, there's a lot of them. Also indirectly related to PF grade and FOB security, I wanted to give a few quick pro tips for how to manage your ESP rankings. My best advice here is to aim high at your own peril, because guys at the top levels that aren't hackers play a really mean game, and some of them are the most active people in MGS5. So they know how to kick over bases, and climbing high on leaderboards is a great way to attract them to your FOBs. However, you should be aware also of smurfing pro players at low levels, because even if you decide not to compete, you still run the danger of being free sport for guys who have deliberately bled their ESP score down to nothing, just so they can run over everyone at the lower levels. Regardless of where you want to be in the ESP rankings, make sure you have a strategy and arm yourself with tactics to achieve it. I'd also refer you to my FOB Infiltration 101 video for tips on how to be an effective attacker in FOB mode. But in the end, brace yourself for a long ride. Let's talk about insurance. Earlier we touched on the hard reality that there will be times when your base is left exposed during construction, or you might want to find yourself taking a break for a week or two to focus on other things. In either case, if you want to avoid losing the edge you work to gain by pumping hours into MGS5, I recommend investing in base insurance using MB coins. Yes, yes, but let me clarify, I will never advise anyone to actually spend money to purchase insurance. If you've played your cards right and have been saving up your daily reward MB coins, you should end up with enough in the bank to spend if the need ever arises. For myself, as someone who is active in the top 700-ish players bracket, and as a player who took place in the nuke war as a proliferator of warheads, my FOBs were being constantly hit for about a year and a half, but I had saved up enough MB currency that I was able to limit my losses during my off periods, and since the max coverage time goes up to two weeks, there's something for everyone. Insurance doesn't prevent attackers from stealing your staff and resources. Instead, it reimburses you pound for pound, person for person, for every container and turret you lose, and every staff member killed or abducted. You'll get everything back except for nuclear warheads, which is clearly defined on the policy disclaimer. Pop quiz, hotshot! You just got back from an event grind, you're ready to peace out and go grab another monster or whatever energy drink you binged to get through it. You're sitting in your ACC, you're reaching to pull off your sweat-soaked headphones, when it happens. What do you do? It's a rule older than any written rules. Don't let people steal your shit. Get in there and send them packing back to the kiddie pool. Or give them new holes to breathe through. But never, ever leave it up to chance if you're online to defend your base. In the heat of battle, Use your home field advantage and waste no time going for the throat against an attacker. Remember, you respawn, they don't. For the times you deal with scumbags on the gear who like to instantly put your guards to sleep when they spawn, or use other infinite ammo or cheap hacks to collect ill-gotten gains and shit on your morale, here's some notes for what to look for and who to avoid starting rivalries with. Beware of players with a low ESP level and a high PF rank, as this often indicates the use of trainers or other tools to max out resources without the grind. The top level PF brackets are nearly 100% hackers, and use tools or some kind of exploit to unlock stuff. 
Also keep tabs on who you hit and who hits you, and don't be afraid to check Steam profiles for VAC bans or other telltale indicators. As a player with nearly everything in the game unlocked, I've been sitting in a comfortable spot in the PF grade leagues and even managed to get up to the A brackets without cheating. But most of my PF league opponents were inactive players who used cheat engines to give themselves everything and max out their staff stats whenever the game first launched. It's really stupid that Konami lets these phantom PFs still pollute the meta, and I would hope to see an effort to issue mass bans at some point. We know it'll never happen, so just make do. As a final sidetrack that relates to FOB defense of the PF meta, stockpiling nukes is actually a great idea if you want leverage in the PF matchups, and want to insulate your base against attackers using FOB units to soften your defenses when they invade. There's some hefty trade-offs, however. Having nukes paints a massive bullseye on your base, so you should only build or steal them when you've got a solid, and I mean solid, defense built up. If you choose to build them, only do so after you grind enough heroism to support your target nuke goal, which you should define before you even think about setting foot into this territory. Each FOB can support four nukes on its command platforms, so the cap on how many warheads you can have depends on the number of FOBs you've built up. Again, I would recommend stealing warheads when possible, since the cost of building them is punitive and requires a lot of grinding to get the heroism needed to do it. Protecting nukes can be the hardest, most frustrating, but also the most fun and satisfying aspect of FOB mode. So good luck to you, brave soldier, if you choose to take this lonely and difficult road. So now, at the end of what's been a long, detailed, and hopefully informative and practical walkthrough of FOB security, let's tie everything together. In this video, we covered the fundamentals of FOB security. We looked at a wide array of areas affecting defense, including platform expansion, resources, staff, research, equipment, balancing, and how to deal with invaders and hackers. We also touched on some of the metas like PF grade, ESP, and the game of nukes that has given MGS5 so much hype and built on things not covered in my Infiltration 101 video. In the future, you can expect more content focused on any new updates or changes added to FOB mode or the tech tree, but any additional videos I do on MGS5 will likely be much shorter. If the demand is there, I might be persuaded to consider doing a Let's Play or even some live streaming, but tell me what you guys want to see, as I do read and reply to comments. I've actually been quite surprised by the continuous level of support and engagement from the community on my Infiltration 101 video which still gets hits and subs multiple times every week. The response of viewers is what helped me finally get around to pushing out this video and ensuring it met the same level of quality as the last one. Metal Gear Solid 5 isn't my main game anymore, but it's still one of my favorites and I expect to keep playing it for a long, long time. So that's all I've got for you. Hope you found something useful. Feel free to drop a like or sub if you want to see more, and leave me a comment if there's something I missed or if you have questions. In the meantime, Thank you all so very much for watching. If you liked what you saw, stand by for more. Falcon out.